What do you think the legacies of LeBron, Jokic, Tatum, and Butler are after these playoffs are done? I think so. I think there's two people who are submitting a legacy. And I mm-hmm. think it's one person whose legacy is already cemented. And I think mm-hmm. it's one person whose legacy is stagnant. So okay. I'm going to start with the two people that I think is going to be cemented, which is Jokic and Jimmy Butler. Okay. Jokic, although I hate his game, I hate how <laughs> unorthodox it is. I hate how sloppy it looks. I hate how ugly his game is on the court. Yeah. But whenever you watch him play, and I haven't watched much Jokic this year because, of course, the Nuggets aren't nationally televised all the time. Um, right. I, I, me being on the West Coast, I see more Lakers, I see more Clippers, I see more Portland because I'm right here, right, right below Oregon, anyway, or right above Oregon. I'm sorry, and I see a lot of those games on TV when I do watch basketball during the season. But the little bit that I have seen of, of Jokic, he is a phenomenal player. It, no matter how ugly his game is, and With him winning back-to-back MVPs the last two years and almost won a third straight being the first one to do it since Larry Bird, which we talked about last two weeks ago. Yeah. He is some if he was if he is to win an uh NBA title, I think he will cement his his I think personally, and I'm not saying he's the greatest of all time center, but I think he will cement his legacy as one of the greatest all-time centers to ever play the game of basketball. That's the first one. What, no, and I'm I'm gonna let you rebuttal. What you think about that? How do you feel about that uh, that legacy for for Jokic? So yeah, we we talked about Jokic two weeks ago, and we discussed him as we in the in the realm of him being one of the best centers of all time. Uh, at that time, I said that I didn't consider him one of the best centers of all time because. Being one of the greatest at if a position, but also just in general, is a combination of individual accolades and accomplishments as well as team accolades and accomplishments. Um, and at that time, he was in contention, which we now know he lost the MVP race, but he was in contention, like you mentioned, to have or be named the MVP of the NBA for three years in a row. He lost that. Um, but he's been playing phenomenal in the playoffs mm-hmm. um you know he's been kind of up and down in these these finals but uh these conference finals but his numbers still look pretty good you know when the game is finished if he is to go on which is looking like they're going to beat the lakers and they're up 3-0 right now uh, mm-hmm. in the, in the Eastern, western conference finals if he is to go on to the finals and if they are to win that and then ultimately you know, unless Jamal Murray continues to play how he's playing now, because damn, he's playing good. He going on. Um, if he is to win a championship and a finals MVP as well, I think that cements him. To me, it moves him up in the top five. I'm not going to say he's the greatest of all time by no means, because um, he still has work to do when it comes to that. But he is actually being able to watch Nikola Jokic play basketball more consistently. He does look very unorthodox doing stuff, but he is very good at <laughs> very what he listen. does. Yeah. Um, so it changed it changed my mind a little bit just watching him more. Um and I think, yeah, he the cement definitely isn't wet, but he is cementing his position as one of the, the best centers, top five for sure, to me. Um, in my opinion, I'll make sure I say everything that needs to be said to make sure it's my opinion. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> um, Facts. In my opinion uh, of all time. I agree. I agree. And moving on to the next one, I think that the cement is kind of still wet. It's Jimmy B. Jimmy, Hemi mm-hmm. with the Jimmy or Jimmy Hemi, whatever they want to call him. Mm-hmm. Playoff Jimmy Butler is a thing, dog, because. Mm-hmm. Although we all know Jimmy Butler is a great player and he's been a great player for uh, for a lot of his career. First started off as a lockdown defender, now he's an all-around player for the Miami Heat. And it's, he's kind of been that whenever he was in Philly, uh whenever he was in Milwaukee for that one year, when he was in Philly for that one year, he was a team leader and he was an all-around basketball player. Minnesota. Huh? Minnesota. Minnesota, that's what I meant to say. Minnesota. Yeah, you're right. Minnesota. But 
playoff Jimmy is a thing because it seems like, for whatever reason, it seems like that Jimmy Butler be trolling when it comes to the season. But whenever it comes to playoff time, Jimmy Butler is outstanding. Like averaging 30 points a game, um, seven, 30 and, 37 and 7 throughout the playoffs and carrying his team as far as he can go. And it's on Jimmy's shoulders. And he's got right now an eighth seed, Miami Heat, going against a two seed uh, Celtics team that everybody thought the Celtics was going to come into this. Uh, everybody, Nobody thought Miami was going to get to this point, number one, and then get into the Eastern Conference Finals and going against the Celtics. Everybody thought the Celtics was going to landslide Miami. But yep. not when even Jimmy. It. We exactly we even said it. Yeah, we, we, said our, we, we did our predictions. Philly, yeah, I mean it's still early. I mean it's only two zero as of right now. They play right. today. Cut yep. you off my bat. Now you good. But um, you know, it looks like they have full control of this series. So they, they it, it looks like it. whoever wins the Philly series, Philly Boston series, is probably going to come out of the East and. It's Miami's not looking like that right now, <laughs> but Jimmy is not because Miami. If my if Jimmy got something to do with it, if Jimmy got something to say about it, bro, it's not it's not happening. But Jimmy has been balling. Jimmy, if, if Jimmy gets to the championship and wins it, I think I think I think he will be cemented as one of the one one of the I won't say one of the greatest of all time, but it will it will boost his legacy so much as one of the best basketball players in the history of the game. Too, what you think about Jimmy? So I think if Jimmy is to come out the East and if he is to win a championship as well as be the – I mean, you would assume he's going to be the finals MVP if the Miami Heat are winning the championship. I don't see anybody else really being the finals MVP of that or the MVP of that team unless Bam or Duncan Robinson go off. But Jimmy is by far the best player on that team or the leader of that team for sure. So Mm -hmm. if he comes out the East – uh, and win the championship. I don't think. I think it. It definitely makes him a Hall of Famer. Uh, I believe so right too. One hundred percent. He's on. He's on the cusp of being a Hall of Famer or not. He because he, he doesn't. Let me finish my thought. He's on the cusp of being a, a Hall of Famer. It's not really a guarantee that he'll be a Hall of Famer. But if he comes out the East and wins with the eighth seed Miami eighth Heat team seed. and is the and is the Finals MVP, this cements his Hall of Fame career. Um, it, people are comparing him to Dirk Nowinski if he is to win this and that playoff run they had where they beat Miami that year in 2011. I don't think he should be compared to Dirk Nowinski because in Dirk's case, at least he had a, a, a NBA or league MVP, whereas mm-hmm. Jimmy has never been in consideration, I don't think, to my to my recollection. Not to my recollection, being, yeah. To being a, a MVP. But the playoff run itself, I can see – it being compared to Dirk Nowinski. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, Dirk is number four or five, six, something like that. He's up there top 10 in scoring of all time. Mm-hmm. He has a league MVP as well and a finals MVP and an NBA championship. So I say all that to say, I don't think that makes Jimmy the greatest of anything really, but it does cement his hall of fame career. I I agree, man. And like you said, Presumably and I would final MVP. One hundred percent, and I think, and and just like you, just like Delon said, man, um, he doesn't have those individual awards, but if he like, just like it, just to, just to kind of go off of what he said, if he does get that championship, which is a team award, which Delon alluded to, it's 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 a combination of individual and team. So if he does get that team award and the, with the championship and the individual award with the Finals MVP. He's been on multiple uh, all defensive teams. Uh, he's been in contention with for he's been in contention a couple of times for a uh, defensive player of the year, but never won it. But he has some individual accolades that he can lay on. But if he gets that those two things, then put those two things together, Hall of Fame for career for sure, one hundred percent for Jimmy. I think so. I think so. Mm-hmm. The next person who I think is the the legacy is stagnant is Tatum mm-hmm. because his career is still young. His, th- his career is still very, very young. He made it to the finals last year. Unfortunately, Steph Curry was on the team that he lost to, unfortunately. Right. Uh, right. But made it to the finals last year, and he's on the, on the, he's in the Eastern Conference Finals again this year with the Boston Celtics. And to make it to another finals would be – he. it's like we're just waiting on, on Jason Tatum to, to win it. 
or to we waiting on Jason Tatum to take that next step as a superstar. I think he's a star in the league. I don't think he's a superstar. And I've seen mm-hmm. a lot of I've seen a lot of conversations around how many superstars is it in the league. I think it's like four, five or six maybe superstars in the league right now. Jason Tatum is yeah. not one of them, but he's on his way to becoming a superstar. He's, he just needs, he's he's definitely budding into a superstar in the league. And I think it's stagnant. He just needs that extra he needs that extra thing to push him over the top to NBA superstar. And I think him winning the championship would do that and it would unstagnate his his uh, legacy and move it to the next level. What do you think about Jason Tatum? I think if they lose this series uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals with them being the two and um Miami being the eighth seed, I think it severely stains. I, okay, I shouldn't say severely. I think it stains Jason Tatum's legacy, and he'll have to do outrageous things team-wise in order to unstain that that legacy. Um, it's unfortunate that we're in this era where, as individuals, team accolades weigh so heavy on your legacy. But that's just how we that's where we're in. So I, I agree. I think his I think his legacy is stagnant right now just because he is so young and he does have time to because he what he's only 24, 25, 24, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So he still has a lot of time if he plays another 14 years like LeBron, then and be 38, then he has a lot of time to win championships, to add to this individual accolades to get a league MVP if he wins a championship, finals MVP. So he still has time. Mm-hmm. But if they can't get out of this series as the second seed and lose to the Miami Heat, who are the eighth seed, um, I think it, it stains his career and he'll have to do outrageous things moving forward. Because, I mean, he he's just – he's streaky. Um, yeah, 100 As we saw, you know, the Philly series – he didn't play great, but then game seven when they needed it most, he had 51 points and looked like he could throw the the, the hoop was an ocean to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then now he's not playing bad in the Eastern Conference Finals, but the team isn't winning. He's he's averaging like 30 points or 32 points in this series, but the team's not doing well. And like I said, it's unfortunate that we as a fan, we as fans have made a person's legacy so heavily tied on team the success. team accolades. Mm-hmm. But that's just where we are. And I, I think I, cause I know where we're about to go. We're about to go to LeBron. Mm-hmm. I think that we need to blame those that came before LeBron, the Jordans, the, the, the Kobe's, the Barclays, the Shaq's, those individuals we need, or, um, you know, the Malone's, all those individuals, we need to blame them for how we view a, a great player or not because now is if you don't have a championship you can't be considered a great player it seems like even though right like we we talked about with Jokic two MVPs putting up crazy numbers as far as um you know for a center and he's not really considered in the eyes of many I won't say because we we're getting comments about how good he is mm-hmm. <laughs> you need to watch Nuggets games and whatnot right exactly but but I, I would say in most people's opinion you know these two individuals Jokic and um, Jason Tatum while they are great individuals because they don't have those team accolades they're they're not superstars and Jokic is probably a superstar but yeah no yeah for sure we don't we don't want him to be a superstar yeah, it, the public didn't want does not want Jokic to be a superstar. And although he is 100%, he's one of the two people that we're talking about right now that are superstars in the NBA. Um yeah. and I think like like you said, I think he the, the the team accolade with Boston, like I said they made it last year, they're on the they they can possibly make it again this year. And it it just it just sucks that like Delo said, man, that one a, a singular person on the team who is the star of the team Jason Tatum is the star of the Boston Celtics between him and, J- and Jalen Brown. But Jason Tatum Brown. is definitely the top. Who, who? No, I said Jalen Brown. Oh, Jalen Brown, yeah. Now, uh, he is the star of the team, but you need all f- – it's five people on the court with, with four other people on the court with uh, Jason Tatum. You need all four of the people to do their role and to play their part and handle their responsibility for the team to win. It's not just Jason Tatum taking f- – going one on five and the Celtics are going to win the b- basketball game. So. Right. But like you said, we do need we do need to blame them 
that they blame the uh you know the ghost of NBA past because mm-hmm. although say Charles Barkley didn't win a championship, but he's one of the greatest players of all time. Carl Malone, John Stockton, these guys who were at the top of the league every single year whenever they were playing, but well, not every year because whenever Carl Malone, I would, to, to I would, league, I would argue yeah. that. <laughs> what, what, what's, your, what's, what's your argument? I would argue that Charles Barkley is not considered one of the greatest of all time because he doesn't have a um, a ring. But that's if that, he had that's a, what I was saying though. That's what I was saying, yeah. though. He he's still one of the greatest players of all time, but we consider him not to be because he didn't win a championship. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. That's what that's that's what I was, that's what I was saying. So it's, you gotta you gotta look individual accolades and team accolades should I, I think should be separate. But since you're on that team, you're gonna get the you're gonna reap the benefit of winning that championship because you were on that championship team and you played a part to win that championship. So I understand why it's lumped together, but in, the individual can somebody can be one of the greatest players of all time without. The team success, if that makes sense, without yeah. the team success. Um, now moving on to our boy, who we find out a way every single week every to week. talk about on the podcast, is our boy Bron. I think Bron's legacy is cemented already. I mean, mm-hmm. anytime that you got somebody who's being considered the greatest of all time and is in that argument for the greatest of all time, has already cemented that legacy. LeBron, even if he gets swept, even even if the Lakers get swept. And I say, you see how I said he gets swept and it's a team thing. Even if the Lakers get swept against the Nuggets tomorrow night, that doesn't stain LeBron's legacy at all to me. Uh, LeBron has already won four in my in my opinion. In my going to say all the right things to make sure everybody understands this is just our opinions. But in my opinion, it doesn't stain LeBron's legacy at all if he gets swept by the Nuggets tomorrow because. He's already won four championships. He's already got multiple MVPs. He's already won multiple uh, uh, um, finals MVPs. He's been on multiple all NBAs, all defensive teams. He's got the resume for one of the greatest of all time players. I'm not going to say Thief because I know know what the conversation is going to be like. But he's got the resume for one of the greatest of all time players in the NBA NBA history. Score of the league. You see what I'm saying? He has everything. What else does the LeBron need? A fifth championship will put him on par with the Kobe's of the world and having the fifth the fifth ring. But at the same time, mm-hmm. he has what he needs to have that resume to be considered one of the greatest players of all time. So LeBron's legacy is already cemented. He's he's on a path right now where I'm a player year with my son. And I'm getting him. that's what I see. And when I when I watch yeah. him on the basketball court. I feel like he you can you can kind of tell LeBron the 38 is catching up to him a little bit in this series. You mm-hmm. can tell that he's kind of lost a little bit of a step. And that's all boy, he's still he's still averaging 23 7 and 7 in the playoff and in this series. So it's not like he's still not a a productive player in the NBA or in this series or in the playoffs, but I think he's just on a path where it's just like I've done everything I needed to do. I'm considered 1A 1B depending on who's arguing. So it's like what else do I need? Like what else do I need? What do you think about LeBron? I mean, I, I, in my opinion, I believe his career, his legacy is cemented as well. Um, but I'm going to argue what the public is going to argue. This is going to severely stain LeBron's career if he is, in fact, to get swept. Even if he gets the gentleman sweep of five games, it's mm-hmm. going to stain his career just because he is the only individual in the history of basketball shit for the history of sports to still be – um, ridiculed and praised or, you know, whatever the case is at the age of 38. I guess Tom Brady, you could say Tom Brady. A little bit, in yeah. That category as well. um, to, to be heavily scrutinized and heavily ridiculed for the success or the not success of the team um, when he's in year 20 of his career. So I think if LeBron is going to, if they do lose, if he doesn't get to the finals, if they don't win the championship, this this stains his career, um, his legacy, and he'll have to come back again next year and try to win a championship and maybe even be league MVP or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's public opinion. My opinion, again, is no, I don't think it it, uh, it stains his career. LeBron has done everything he needs to and more in this career, in his career, in his, uh, in the NBA. He's came into the league with high expectations. He's met and surpassed those expectations. So 
to me, no, this doesn't stain his career. He's done everything he needs to do um, to to do it. It just looks bad late in his career, um, mm-hmm. still being such a high volume and heavily counted on player for the the Los Angeles Lakers to lose or not win the championship. But we have to remember that they are the seventh seed, even mm-hmm. though that trade at midseason or the trade deadline drastically changed the momentum and the trajectory of the season. They are the seventh seed. So they don't have home court advantage and never have home court advantage in the playoffs. Even when they played the Warriors, who were the sixth seed, <laughs> they didn't have home court advantage. So um no, I don't think it I don't think it hurts his career, but we know public opinion is gonna say different. So we'll go with that or I'll go with that. Yes, it's going to stay in his career. Yep. So quick prediction, D since we then talked about the four people whose careers are cemented, stagnant, or going on the rise. Yep. Who's 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 uh who's winning the championship, bro, bro? If the Nuggets keep playing how they're playing right now, it's gonna be the Nuggets and I say it'll be a toss up depending on which Jamal Murray shows up between Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic as the finals MVP. Mm-hmm. Um, now, with that being said, so I, I, my opinion is I think the Nuggets are going to win. Two weeks ago I said I think the Nuggets are going to win, but I want the Lakers to win. Um, so that that's my, my call. But I could see the Miami Heat winning as well with a team effort um, and, you know, playing lockdown defense against the the Nuggets and uh, Jimmy Butler being the MVP. But my pick is, I'll just say it one more time, to Nuggets and a toss-up for MVP between Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, Jamal depending Murray. on which Jamal Murray shows up. For sure. I think – What it, about you? As, as much as I would love a Lakers-Celtics championship – it ain't happening. <laughs> it ain't mm-hmm. happening. Um, the Nuggets are going to close out this series in the next, it, either tomorrow or or Wednesday, um, depending on you know what Lakers team show up tomorrow. Um, and I think today Jimmy Butler is going to did this the 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 Boston and Miami series is a little bit different because that's th- those are two evenly matched teams. The Nuggets far outmatch the Lakers. Far out. I wouldn't actually say that. They do, bro. They do, bro. Just looking at that. Look at look at the court, bro. We talked about it yesterday when we were watching the game, dog. Nobody can. Nobody is banging with the big body of Jokic. No, but uh, Jokic is not really a banger, though. Michael Porter Jr. is too tall for a lot of those for a lot of those people trying to guard him. Murray is going off. He's killing Schroeder and whoever's guarding him too. Even Bruce Brown coming off the bench and killing people. They they are far overmatched, bro. Just looking at that game, the Nuggets far overmatched the Lakers. The only people that's going off for the Lakers is AD and LeBron. That's it, dog. Nobody else is well, is know, handling them. You I can look Reeves at it and see. Well, I think Reeves, Reeves has played, played well, well, but he ain't guarding nobody. I think Reeves has played well this series. I think um, the X factor is uh, Jamal Murray. Um, I think. Yeah. This is my opinion. I think the experience of Darvin Ham has shown itself. He's he's done well these playoffs. I can see that. Um, but his adjustments, they so we thought we found something, or the Lakers thought they found something by putting Rui on Rui on um, Jokic and letting AD roam. Well, that hasn't fared well because now they're just saying, okay, well you you got a quote unquote answer for Jokic but you don't have an answer for Jamal Murray. And in mm-hmm. crunch time, the defense has fallen apart because you have pieces together that haven't really played together often mm-hmm. uh, in the playoffs or just in general. So it's a lot of miscommunication. I'm going to go on record and say a lot of the times when somebody is getting a wide open layup, it's LeBron's fault because he's watching, you know, he's roaming, but he's his eyes aren't, he can't see the his, man in his peripheral so they get away from him um, because he's watching the ball and trying to help where he can help but um i don't think they're i still like to say i don't think they're outmatched i just think they're being out coached and the nuggets after that drought that they put on the phoenix suns realized oh man we can we can really do something and from that point on 
I mean, they've been. You think they're well hungrier? The you think they're hungrier than the Lakers? I, I think. I think they smell it. Yeah, I think. I think they smell it, and the Lakers just expect because they made it this far that, and they have LeBron, they have AD, that the Nuggets are going to lay down, and that has not been the case. In crunch time, not the Nuggets the like they they've stepped up and done what they need to do, and then I think, mm-hmm. like you said, with the Miami Boston series, I do think they're pretty evenly matched they're similar mm-hmm. stature team with height mm-hmm. um you know the only thing is i would say boston has two superstars or two stars whereas miami only has jimmy butler so um but and, i mean you could put bam in there but i wouldn't yeah. put bam and Jalen brown on the same sentence i wouldn't either i wouldn't either but yeah so so yeah so i think i think it's gonna be a nuggets and I think it's going to be a Nuggets in, in, in Miami finals. And mm-hmm. as much as I want to, as much as I want to say Miami, because I want Jimmy to get that joint, bro. I want Jimmy to get it because he, he has played so phenomenally. He's literally carried his team through this playoff run. I want him to get it just to have that Cinderella story. But at the same time, for an eighth seed to win a championship, I don't even know. How, I don't even know if that's even happened before. I, I haven't even looked into it, honestly. But for AC to nah. win a championship in the NBA, which has probably never happened before, I want that to happen for Jimmy. But I think it's going to be a Nuggets. I think Jokic is going to get his his first championship. He'd be cemented as one of the greatest centers of all time, and he's most likely going to win the Finals MVP. That's my prediction. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. If you've made it this far, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit the notification bell so you miss none of the content. Also. You can find us on all your streaming platforms, wherever you find your podcasts.